large windows that seem to have been beamed down from on high. They give off reflections of liturgical looks, only seen from the inside, leaving the atmosphere fragrant with religious awe. Stained glass has a thousand-year-old history, but it's a modest one. Little is known about the creators or the process. I caught up with Dr. Francis Green, a professor of fine arts, for answers. What historians believe to be the first stained glass was found in England in the Cathedral of Jarrah. It dates back to the late 600s and very little survives. Very often people associate stained glass only with the Gothic after 1200. It existed very much earlier uh, in rather simple form but, but beautiful and so it has a longer tradition than people would think. The Egyptians and Romans started making colored glass very early on. They were created with chromium, silver, gold and cobalt. After being colored, the glass was blown. They would blow the glass, which was not a new process, into a cylinder, and amazingly, while it was molten, slice it and lay it out to become sheets. After that, the sheets were dry and they were cut. Historians can locate a specific time when stained glass became part of religion, in Paris at the Cathedral of Saint-Denis in the late 1100s. The abbot there, whose name was Suget, uh, had the first idea that the interior of a church or a cathedral should be otherworldly and spiritual so that it should be bathed in light that's not of this world and that the light would elevate you to greater truths. But why did stained glass blossom during the medieval period when so many other things did not? At a time when there was no printing and when throughout Europe maybe 80 to 85 percent of the population were illiterate Coming in the cathedral, all the great stories that one heard on Sunday, the gospel stories, were there in living color for one to see. The people hungered for that. The clergy could use those windows as instruction. When we think of stained glass, we think of cathedrals all over Europe. But it is also a true American art story. Many of us don't know that in the 19th century, New York City was making stained glass to rival the rest of the world, some right here in our diocese. Right here in Brooklyn and Queens, in our uh, parish churches that we have, we have structures, sculptures, and stained glass that could rival the great monuments in Europe. Those at St. Charles are extraordinary. What's wonderful, they were done slowly over a period of time, so that some of them as late as 1918, and you see this range of development of style. Uh, their colors are superb. What's unique about St. Charles' windows are its memorials. They allow us to gauge a time frame the windows were made. It became very common here in America as a way of uh, getting support to build a window, that it could be a, a memorial to somebody, a loved one. In order to see who made these beautiful pieces, you have to look very closely. Artists created the work and then disappeared behind it. It was for the glory of God and for the good of the church. After my interview with Dr. Green, I wanted to learn how stained glass is made now. I met up with Harry Gillen, a retired New York City firefighter at his local firehouse in Red Hook. He's been making stained glass for over 30 years. The ancient process is basically the same. Well, I find something that I like, mm -hmm. number one. Then I draw it or enlarge it, decide what color we're going to cut. And I have different colored uh, magic markers and I make the outside. So then what I do, my glass cutter, when you hear that sound, it's, it's fantastic because you know it's cutting it. Now this is the amazing part. This is a breaker. It breaks the color, the glass. Now, see? The next thing you need is copper foil tape. You wrap this around the edges of each piece. We put it all around, try and get it as even as we can. After that, you paint the edges with flux and use a soldering iron to melt the pieces together. Once the pieces are melted together, you're finished. But I can't guarantee that your first piece will be as good as Harry's. He's even currently making one for the Bishop of Bridgeport and Brooklyn-born Frank Caggiano. 
I'm not there yet. For Currents, I'm Michelle Powers.